So we've got video guys now playing. Um, it's going to be Doug from the Vintage Showroom. And it's a 10 minute video and it's awesome. Vintage Showroom is quite amazing. This, this day, they've got a showroom in West London and they've got another showroom in East London, East, in East London as well. And the two guys that, are like, that, are that run it, Doug and Roy, are absolute legends. They have such an amazing archive and we have actually been invited to go and visit, go and like visit it. So it's going to be quite inspiring. They've got a massive showroom of sweats, T-shirts, work, workwear, space suits, goodness me, loads of stuff, but a lot of outerwear as well. And they've actually released a number of books and, and some of them, which are actually in your, li in your library, they've done three books with Sue Barrett, who's going to also teach on this sort of, sort of program. They're called the Worn Books. And they've got two other books that are very, 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 very popular in like, in like menswear. But it's, it's such a beautiful showroom. Oh, my God. And we're going to go and visit it probably in the next week or so. So uh, whoever wants to go, do reach out to Neil. Oh, yeah, you're putting your hand, putting your hand up now. But <laughs> it, um, yeah, and also, we have to be very careful. We're not allowed to go there and take loads of photos. They encourage you to draw the details and remember them. So then you can't go there and take thousands of photos. You have to go there with a notebook and you draw. So that's how they encourage you to learn about garments. So it's quite stunning. And look at that video. How amazing is that? So yeah, they they got two two showrooms and they've got a couple of books in in the in like in the library, but it's worth visiting their showroom and we're going to organize it in the next 10 days. Fingers crossed. So you can see, you know, it, it's loads of denim, of course, loads of shirts, you know, but loads of cool stuff. But this is this must be their new showroom that Correct. they've just 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 made, which I haven't even seen yet, but I've gone to their other other showrooms. So they used to have a store in Covent Garden. And uh, they close it down, and now now they got this. So I think it's a, it's a great step up, and loads of military stuff, loads of stuff from the eighteen hundreds. Um, it's unbelievable, and you can buy as well if you if you're crazy. I've bought loads of stuff from them, but um, you can if you've got money to burn, go and buy it. But I think they they rent a lot of stuff as well. There we go. The past is a foreign country. They do things differently there. I've always loved this quote from the opening lines of L.P. Hartley's The Go-Between. Much of what we do is based on this journey into the past, bringing back snapshots of earlier times in the forms of garments or fabrics, photographs or keepsakes. I think most of us would recognise how intoxicating nostalgia can be, especially after the strain of the last year. So let's indulge a little more as I take you to West London. It's 1967 and we're on the world famous Portobello Road. <laughs> So we are actually walking along Portobello Road here in 1970. This is a short excerpt from the amazing counterculture documentary Getting It Straight in Notting Hill Gate, which was filmed in and around Portobello Road and the surrounding Notting Hill area, which at the time was described as the world's most integrated ghetto. Recently we have been working on a research project around the history of Portobello Road somewhere very close geographically, just a stone's throw from where I'm recording this audio today, at our West London showroom at Bus Space Studios, and also somewhere very close to our hearts. My business partner Roy and myself spent many years selling vintage there, and this is where we first met and dreamed up the vintage showroom some 16 or 17 years ago now. I think we're particularly drawn to this area during the period of the late 1960s, when it was this crazy melting pot and one of the most exciting and vibrant areas within the UK.
right now. You know, I have to to start the European tour. <laughs> oh, look out, here he comes. <laughs> You're part of the local Libby. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Happy birthday, sweet 16, da da da. With Portobello Road as the backdrop for our inspiration, it is the Portobello Market itself where our muse, Marsha Hunt, recalls first hearing of the auditions for a new musical that would change British theatre forever. The 27th of September, 1968, saw the curtain come down on the Lord Chamberlain's Act, an archaic censorship law dating back to 1737. It seems fitting that later that night a cast of long-haired actors would take to the stage of London's West End in a show depicting drug taking, anti-war protests and nudity. I am of course talking about the opening night of Hair, the American tribal rock musical, of which Marsha Hunt was part of the original London troupe, and the inspiration both for the original artwork for the musical's poster, and along with her cast members, our concept today. Hair was a musical that placed the 1960s counterculture on stage. The show's rejection of monogamy, celebration of interracial relationships, acceptance of homosexuality and full frontal nudity was groundbreaking, and too much for many in the audience on the opening night in London, as the youth movement came alive on stage, full of energy and vitality. We really loved Marsha Hunt's look in the rehearsals, the kind of mix of quite a bohemian feel, typical of what you'd expect of the kind of counterculture movement, but also with that kind of varsity top, just gave it a really, really great look. So we tried to capture that when we were setting up the the rigs, and that was one of the first looks we came up with, was this uh, keeping this kind of football, American football jersey style, which obviously is very like Gucci at the moment. And we wanted to, both sort of poor garments that had a lot of character, we were conscious that if we had been dressing the stage, you know, the stage production, what would have been coming across on stage? So really exaggerated patchwork, beautiful fades, some sort of interesting hand customized pieces and a mix of kind of late 60s, early 70s really gave us our kind of build out of the rigs for this story. <laughs> 